The name of the show is The Way to Go. Tonight we have a very special guest. Someone, I, I can't believe we even have him on the show. He's a fine actor, he's an amazing photographer, and he's an all-around nice guy. <laughs> Mr. Lawrence Ballard, welcome to the show. Thank you, I need to hire you as my agent. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lawrence. Yes. So, uh, where are you from originally? Um, originally, I grew up for the most part uh, right outside of Washington, D.C. in uh, Maryland, uh, uh, Prince George's County area. But oh. uh, I was born in San Diego and I've lived all over the place, everywhere from Little Rock, Arkansas to Italy. So, wow. And uh, I guess, um, does that have anything to do with what your dad did for a living? Or, yes, uh, it who, does. Who, who's your dad? My dad. Who's your daddy? No. My, dad, my dad is a former professional basketball player, Greg Ballard. That's and, it. Uh, now he's a coach for the Atlanta Hawks. He's one of the coaches down there. How so. cool is that? I mean, that's, that's like the coolest job you could possibly have, it, right? Yeah, it was pretty cool. Even though he, he'll, he would laugh because he remembers when I was a kid, I had gone to see the Harlem Globetrotters, and I told him, oh. if you play like those guys every night, I would come see every game. There it is. <laughs> so, you know. So, uh, moving around a lot, you must have gone to a lot of different schools and stuff. Yeah, I did. I went to a lot of... Uh, a lot of different schools, high schools, and even when I got to college, I started out at the University of Maryland. I actually started out at Prince George's Community College and then transferred to University of Maryland, and I actually finished my undergrad at uh, University of Minnesota. And what did you get your degree in? I got it in theater. Wow. I, so, so when did you realize that theater was the direction you were going? I, I didn't realize for a long time. Like, I had, I had done uh, some, some plays when I was in high school. Uh, my junior year, I, the first play I did was uh, um, Oklahoma. Wow. So yeah, and uh, I was a cowboy in that. But uh, I never really thought about it being a career or anything like that because uh, you know, you hear so many people telling you like, you need to find something else to do, something that's gonna support you. And so I went into co into college thinking that I was gonna major in computers. And uh, when I got to uh, my calculus classes and <laughs> And my econ classes, I was like, this is not for me. I just, I just didn't feel like I f was able to fit there. But the funny thing about it was I was constantly doing plays in the theater department. So people thought I was part of the theater program, but I really wasn't. And then I just made that decision then in college just to go down that path. W were your parents supportive in that decision? At first, no. No, they weren't. <laughs> they weren't at all because, you know, the, the, the thing is, you know, how, how are you going to make a living? And... Uh, my dad being in sports, in a weird way, he kind of understood that because sports, you know, is very close to entertainment in the sense of, you know, you, you don't really have job security, especially if you're a player. Right. You know, you get hurt, you get traded. There's so many things that could come up and cause you to either be out of a job or move and you never know what the, the next year is going to be like. So he wanted me to go a more traditional route job wise. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, they hopped on board pretty quick when they saw me perform. Right. And I think that happens a lot with a lot of parents when they see their kids do something and they see how passionate they are about it. And, and uh, you know, I thought I wanted to be a basketball player. And my dad was like, you need to find something else to do. Right. And so when he saw that I actually had some passion about it and I had some talent, he, right. he they pretty much jumped on board. Well, on some talent it. is one way of putting it. I mean, you're, <laughs> you're very talented and uh, it's been observed by the casting directors that have used you. <laughs> I mean, um, you've, you've, you've been on Broadway, you've been in uh, episodic television, you've had uh, recurring roles in episodic television, you've been in soap operas. I mean, I'm in awe of you. I mean, I think, I think it's, uh, you, you know, it's fantastic. What was your first professional gig? I mean, uh, my first professional gig, um, professional professional. Well, I, I well say actually, that maybe, we, maybe I'm jumping ahead if you wanted to talk no, about it. Okay. No, it's, um, I had, before I had gone to grad school, I, I had done what I considered a professional gig because it was outside of school. Right. I did a version of Reservoir Dogs oh, in wow. Minnesota. And um, I was supposed to play the police officer who trains uh, one of the characters um, um, how to you know, be part of the gang. I think it was Mr. Orange, he tra trains uh, Mr. Orange. But the guy that. we had is, as Mr. White ended up dropping out. 
And so the director was like, do you want to play Mr. White? And I was like, sure. So that was my first experience outside of a school setting. And that was, uh, I think that was my junior year of college. But my first gig where I got an official paycheck and I became a part of the union, I did uh, a play called Blues for an Alabama Sky in Cincinnati at a, at a theater called uh, Cincinnati Playhouse in the Park. See, I've never done stage, except yeah. as a, like a student, like I, when I was in junior high school or whatever it was. Is, from what I hear from interviewing people, it's the biggest rush, you know, that the the connection with the audience, because I'm I'm much more comfortable with a camera yeah. than I am, <laughs> you know, on a stage. Yeah. I mean, do you get more pleasure on stage than you do in front of a camera? Or uh? yeah, you do. I mean, I equate it to being like in a band or being a stand-up comedian. Like, the the feeling that you get is immediate. You know, you mm-hmm. you're actually performing not just for people but you're performing with them because you are performing your performance is heavily influenced by the audience that's there Mm -hmm. so if you have a great audience that could improve your performance so much and uh it's 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 just so so much fun to actually perform and have people hear people laugh at what you're doing or you know when something's emotionally charged uh to, to get that feeling that they're paying attention to what's happening. And you find, you, you really do find that you're, you're working with the audience and uh, to, to create this moment. It's like an organism almost. It, it really yeah, is. It I, really I, is. I, can, I can see what you're saying. It really is. It's great. Uh, have, did your parents come to that show? or uh? they, had, they didn't come to that. My dad came to see the Reservoir Dogs one. And I think that that was the first thing that he had seen. Because I had done all this different stuff in college. I had done like... Angels in America and and like these really heady plays and you know my dad loves that stuff but when I did like this movie with guys with guns and stuff like that he that was the first time he was like I really like that (laughs) you know because you know that's that's what he what he enjoyed but um, they they try to see as much as they can but uh, yeah that that wasn't the first thing that they had come come to see but they've seen enough stuff so So, uh did, how long did you stay in Cincinnati? Or, uh? Uh, actually, I went, I went there a few times to do some shows. I did uh, Twelfth Night and I did Blues for an Alabama Sky. So um, usually when you do a regional theater show like that, you're there for a, about three months. Mm-hmm. And so I, th- I think for that performance, I was there for three months. But I've been to Cincinnati a few times doing shows. And great city, great place to do, do theater. So. so up to that point, uh, you had done primarily stage work. Yes. Yes. Uh, did you continue doing stage work, or did I, you? I sure s- did. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, that that being my first gig out of school um, was great. But I continued to do stage work. I, I and I did some more regional theater in uh, St. Louis as well. And then um, I got back to New York, and I ended up understudying a Raisin in the Sun, and having a small role at the end, uh, one of the movie men on that show. That was uh, 2004. So. How cool was that, I that mean, to be on Broadway? I it, mean, uh, isn't that the dream of every actor? Yeah, to be it really on was. It really was. And uh, it, was, it was really great because it was a show that everybody was excited about. Right. So to be able to do a show that had so much, so many expectations behind it was great. Also, not being the main person on stage was great for me because I got the experience of being able to be a part of something without having the pressure that you know, being a lead in something of that magnitude would have, but the but the cast was great. It was, it was uh, uh, P Diddy, right, uh, unbelievable. Uh, I was uh, Felicia Rashad, um, uh, Sanaa Lathan, um, a great great cast of people, uh, really awesome. Audra McDonald was in it as well. Oh my God! And so uh, <laughs> that was great. After that, I had done I had understudied uh, Soldiers Play as right. well on second at second stage, and I understudied Tay Diggs and. Anthony Mackie in that show. And, and you know all these people though, right? I mean, as a result yeah. of working with them, yeah, I yeah. mean, it's a community. And, yeah. And how cool is it to be part of a community of working actors and uh, I mean. Uh, it really is, I'm lucky, you know, I'm fortunate in, in the sense that, you know, I, I think the statistic is like 90% of the actors don't work. Right. And for me to work and then, you know, I, I'm actually able to pay bills That's doing fantastic. it. That's fantastic. Now you also, you do, uh, you've done soap operas mm-hmm. and uh, is, is that, a, what, what I've, I've never done a soap opera. <laughs> is that, uh, what type of, I mean, is it tough? Do you, do you get like the lines 
like the night before. How does it work with a soap opera? I'm curious. I was very new when I start when when I had done soap operas. I was pretty much right out of grad school. Okay. Um, and uh, it's it's a tough it's a tough business to work in. A, a lot of a lot of people and a lot of actors who've never done it don't really realize how tough it is, and they tend to criticize soap actors, but they get scripts. Uh, maybe a week in advance for the shows that they're going to film. But the thing about it is they can have rewrites up until the time right before they step on that right. stage. And we're talking pages and pages and pages of scripts. That's crazy. The leads are, are constantly learning lines and uh, the pace is extremely quick. So we're talking maybe two, three takes at the most is what they get and then they move on to the next shot. Sounds like the milkman on uh, State Home Exactly, Day. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's it. You get one shot, that's, that's it. it. <laughs> that's it. But even when I worked on Cagney and Lacey back in the day, um, you know, Tyne and Sharon would get rewrites as we were shooting. Yeah. And, you know, they'd have to, like, memorize it, you know, and, and it would be seamless. I mean, yeah. at that level, you yeah. know, uh, it's amazing how they do it. Yeah. So... Uh, so the soap operas came after grad school. What happened after that? I mean, in terms of... Um, uh, after that, I, I continued doing some regional theater things, and I kind of pulled back from doing that a little bit just because, you know, life, your, your life is on hold. Right. If you're gone, you know, three months for a show, and then if you get shows back to back, then, you know, you're basically away from home most of the year. Right. So I decided to stay in the city and try to do a lot more work. So when did city. New York City become your home? I, out of grad school, I, I was one of those actors who... Um, decided to make New York my place. It was closer to my my uh, wife's family, right. and uh, I've, I've lived most of my life on the on the East Coast. I had that time in San Francisco right. for about uh, two and a half years, but you know I'm an East Coast guy, and I, I feel a lot more comfortable out here. Even though I love Los Angeles, a lot I love of people, it too. I a lot of people it. say they don't like it, but it's what's well, not to like yeah. except the air, but, except the air, and it can get lonely. That's oh, the thing about that's LA. It. That's it. New York, you can have friends and you actually see them. Exactly. In LA, they say you're, you're friends, but you never see them. Exactly. It's like exactly. Uh, it's crazy. Exactly. So I, I make trips out to LA sometimes for different projects. I, I did a commercial for ESPN. I went out there, and so whenever I have something going on, I'll go out there. So you do a lot of commercial work. Um, that's primarily how I make a lot of money to allow me to do stage work, because right. stage work doesn't really pay That's that great. It. I mean, I, I've, I've done one, <laughs> I, I had one commercial in 1985 for Hitachi, and then I got two commercials for, uh, for um, Speed Stick Power, which I did two years ago, Yeah. and that paid for like my son's uh, first tuition, uh, first semester of tuition. Yeah. And, I yeah. mean, you know, the money that you get in a national commercial. Yeah, it's not, it's it's, not bad. You know, you're four hours worth of work, or yeah. eight hours, you know, yeah. forget about it. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so you're also, it seems like you've done a lot of work in the law and order uh, realm. Like, uh, what's it like working on that show? Because I've never, that was, I mean, everyone says, you never worked law and order? <laughs> it's like, what are you? Are you sure you're an actor in New York? So what was it like working on that show? Uh, it, was, it was great. I mean, it, it's one of those things where um, I, I never had a big role on the show. I mean, I, I had roles with names sometimes, but it, it was never anything big. But... Uh, it was one of those great experiences for a New York actor to oh, yeah. get on the set because when you're in New York, you don't have as many opportunities as you do it's in true. Los Angeles Absolutely. to be on a TV show. Absolutely. And um, during that time, Law & Order was the only game in town. So to be able to get on Law & Order and learn what it's like to act in front of a camera was a big deal for me because I've only done a lot of stage right. stuff to that point. And uh, that that was a place for actors to cut their teeth and learn what that was like. And the level of acting that the the stars of that show had were, were yeah. I think it was pretty incredible. I, I mean, mean uh, if you look at the stars of the show, they are all people that have a long list of credits and right. have done some pretty amazing things and continue to, right. uh, like Christopher Maloney. He yeah. he works a ton in films and and does you know other things. I think he's in the new Jackie Robinson film Forty Two, which I really want to see. Yeah, I mean it's going to be. Yeah, it's going to be, I'm sure it's going to be a great film. So, right. so uh, I guess we could talk, well, so you've done, what, what other, uh, you've done web things as well. Yes, <laughs> I have. And that's how I met you. Yes. Um, I remember the first day of, uh, after a 22-year, uh, uh, <laughs> what, what's the word? Uh, um, hiatus. Hiatus, that's yes. the word. Thank <laughs> you. Got a, you know, senior moment. 22-year hiatus uh, from not acting, the first gig I got was... Uh, a show called The Stay at Home Dead. And uh, uh, I was really nervous. I hadn't worked in 22 years. And 
I met Lawrence on the set of that that show, and he was so friendly, and I was so I was like, eh. <laughs> I was like so nervous, and. Uh, I played the boss on the show that terminates this guy that made him the stay-at-home dad. And Lawrence, what did you play? What was your character? I played a guy who um, the the main character Brandon Williams plays, the guy who created and wrote it. He insults my wife <laughs> at a children's birthday party, <laughs> and uh, my wife happens to be white, and he makes a racial crack, and I decide to catch up to him <laughs> on the street, and we have a little little back and forth. So. It was fun. He's he's a good guy. It was right. great. But it was great a, web I'll tell you, it, it, that was a comedy. But that that moment was like chilling in a way. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because you know, in a way, you almost feel bad for Brandon because he the character he's playing is like uh, he he doesn't he doesn't realize that he's such an idiot. No, you he, know? Doesn't, and, and not he, at all. he doesn't mean to hurt anybody. But yeah. everything he says is like <laughs> hurts everyone. You know. Yeah. And, but he's he's a he's an unbelievably talented guy, and it's uh, and I'm happy that. We were able to uh, meet as a result of that, yeah. and the whole crew—Dave Bradley, uh, Adam Jones—you know all yeah. those guys. Yeah. Trevor. I'm trying to think. The, who, the cinematographer. I always forget his name. I can't remember. I can't remember his name either. You put me on the spot. I know. I'm sorry. I'm the one who screwed up. <laughs> sorry about that. I was thinking about that all day. What the hell is his name? But that was a fun show. It and, really was. Uh, and I think like. Hundred thousand hits, whatever yeah. you got. I mean, you, you got that a, episode. They got a ton. The whole <laughs> it did so well. Did millions of hits for the entire episode. Yeah, and for the entire show. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, what's next for you? I mean, uh, I, I am. I'm actually working on a web series myself. I'm. I'm gonna shoot the first episode on the 28th oh, cool. of this month, and. I'm going to see how that goes. I'm, I'm shooting it with a uh, friend of mine. He's going to be the cinematographer. His name is uh, Michael Cinquino. And uh, I got three great actresses in, in this first episode. And hopefully it, it turns out great because if it does, then we'll see where we can go from there. But we so, want to get that first one. So ready. is it a comedy? or what? It is a comedy. Oh, it cool. is a comedy. And uh, it's uh, a little bit uh, un-PC. Right. So we, we go out there with the humor a little bit. But it should be fun. People should have fun watching it. And is this your first, uh, have you been a filmmaker before? Or, uh, is this your first endeavor or is I've, this? I've done small things. I've done short things. I, I've, I've filmed uh, pieces for people that want to use stuff for their reel. Right. Um, I've done uh, uh, samples for pilots and stuff like that. I've, right. never, uh, I've never done anything huge. Um, but I think I've got enough going and understand enough that I, I could pull off a web series. So. And you probably, you know, I mean, with all, the, with all your friends who are very talented, I mean, you have, you have tons of friends that are very talented. I'm sure you could really put together a, a nice ensemble piece. I yeah, think, I I, think I'm just hoping they'll say yes. <laughs> well, why not? I mean, uh, they said yes to stay at home dead. Uh, yeah, they did, there that's it is. true. I mean, that was incredible. So you have other endeavors too, right? I mean, I, I saw some I, on Facebook, you know, yeah, what yeah. can you say? <laughs> you post something on Facebook, everyone sees it. And I saw such wonderful photography. I mean, it was... Uh, Thank you. And I also looked at some of the comments that were made about, how, like, how the hell did you get those? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get those pictures? And like, uh, of, I guess, Andrew McCarthy and uh, other people. Uh, and, yeah, it was uh, it, Paul Rudd. Oh, and, Paul Rudd. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, maybe uh, it wasn't Andrew. And Paul, Paul Haggis. Uh, right. What happened was... Um, I have a good friend, Kate Lacey, who uh, used to be a casting director right. for uh, Touchstone Pictures, That's and uh, Red, right. yeah, <laughs> and she she decided to uh, do a a uh, documentary about her mentor, and the movie's called Casting By. It got picked up by uh, I think HBO picked it up, wow. and uh, it should be showing. I'm I'm not sure, right. uh, maybe in the fall or something sometime. Excellent uh, documentary. It was at the New York Film Festival and everything. But anyway, she um, she needed a still photographer on the East Coast because her West Coast photo photographer couldn't make it. Right. And I ended up taking photos for her, and I got to photograph, like I said, Paul Rudd, uh, Paul Haggis, the writer-director of Crash, and he wrote oh, Million Dollar Baby. Oh, that's it. Uh, Brooke Shields. Um, and uh, it was just a really cool experience to do that. Were they nice people? Yeah, they were great people. I haven't... It's very rare you run into... Mean people. I mean, and that sounds crazy, right. but you didn't spend enough time in Hollywood. I'll tell you. Maybe that. that's what. <laughs> maybe that's what it was. Some people. Maybe that's. But what I'm not going to mention their names. Maybe but. that's what it was. I mean, I haven't. I really haven't had any bad experiences. I right. can't. I can't say that I have. You, you know, I, I think back to doing Raisin in the Sun, and I remember the first day of sitting in rehearsal, 
uh, with the guy who was directly understudying P. Diddy. Right. And uh, we got there. We had to show up to the rehearsal process a little bit later than everybody else. Everybody else had been working like four days or so. Wow. And so we came in, we sat down, and they were finishing the scene. Uh, P. Diddy and, and uh, Felicia were finishing working on their scene. And so he crosses the room and comes over to us, and he's like, Hi, I'm Sean Combs, and uh, I just want to introduce myself to you guys and just let you guys know that you can say whatever you want to me. If you see me doing anything that's not proper for the theater, let me know. And right there I was like, wow, this is... Because he didn't have to do that, right? You know, and it, it was really cool that he took that time out to to do that. Well, he wanted, I guess, he really wanted to do a good job. He I really mean, did. He, he really did, and he was so respectful of the process and of of knowing that he didn't know everything. That right. it was really cool. But that's that's the example of the things that'll surprise you about a lot of these people. Yeah, and I, I've also I've I've experienced. I mean, even with Brandon, I mean, he helped me. You know, I mean, sometimes people do. The littlest thing on a set, yeah. and it just frees you. Yeah. You know, it just makes you realize how fortunate you are to be able to do what you really want to do. Yeah, you know? definitely, I mean, uh, definitely. It's just great. So, uh, do you, do you have kids? I never asked that. No, question. I don't have kids yet. Um, I don't have kids yet, and people are always like, "Well, if you have kids, <laughs> are you gonna are you gonna make them actors?" And I'm always like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, what does your wife do? I'm curious. Uh, my wife, she works in uh, finance. She's an executive personal assistant and okay. uh, office manager. And uh, she she's really good at what she does. She worked for uh, Adam Dell, Michael Dell's brother, oh, for, cool. for a few years. And then right. he got out of the, the business and... Right. But she's, you know, that's what she does, and well, she's that's, great I, at it. I'm, gonna, I'm the director of finance for a not-for-profit, so I mean, that's how I support my acting, uh, my acting uh, addiction. Yeah. But it's good, and uh, and I have a wife who also allows me to, you know, to spend it. my weekends <laughs> and my nights doing this stuff and doing acting and yeah. stuff like that. It's great. So, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, Is there anything else you could think of that you uh, said? <laughs> the questions are... I, are, are uh, I don't know. I, I would just say that uh, if anybody's interested in my photography or anything oh. like that, they can always follow me on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm along with everybody else. So is that, that something that... Uh, I mean, because you do do that. I mean, you, but uh, do you do that just for pleasure or is that I, something... I do, and it's become... It, it, I want to keep it as... I want to keep it as something that I do for fun because uh, acting can be stressful. And I know that sounds silly to a lot of people, but right. um, j just the simple fact of uh, it consumes a lot of your life because uh, when you're working on projects, uh, you know, your, your attention is focused on that. And then when you're not working on projects, your attention is focused on trying to get a project to work on. Right. And so I, I kind of moved into photography for but, that reason. So do you... Uh I don't know. There's a lot of times, and my wife says I'm nuts when I do this. You know, I, I get worried sometimes. So, yeah. You know, like it's a month or two, and I don't, uh, I don't get a, uh, you know, a little <laughs> bite, and then all of a sudden I get like five things, and I can't do any of them because I, something else in life. Yeah. I mean, is that is that what happens to every actor? Or is that's that, what happens to every actor. I remember, um, I I was uh, I was understudying a show, and I'm, pr I'm not going to say the the particular actor's name because right. he's pretty well known. But I was understudying the show. And uh, this actor has been working for years, well-known actor, and uh, was the lead of the show I was working on. And he was talking to someone, and they were asking him, like, what's wrong? You know, what's happening? And he said, I, I've been auditioning for this part, auditioning, and they ended up giving it to this other person. And it just made me kind of think, like, okay, this is what it's about. It's never ending. Because here's this guy who's been working in the business for decades, and um, has a name for himself, and everyone would consider, you know, well off, and and not have to worry about those kind of things. And he's worried about it. So that's that's just part of the the life of working in this business. Would you ever consider, or maybe you've d done it? Would you ever consider teaching acting, or is yeah? Every now and then, I I coach actors. Sometimes people will come to me and and you know ask me to coach them for scenes. So I've done that. Right. Um, uh, sometimes I put actors on tape and uh, you know when they have an audition right. because I have some equipment to be able to do that and uh, I enjoy doing that I enjoy doing it a lot uh, it teaches you a lot about yourself as a performer and uh, you actually end up learning uh, 
learning things by teaching people. Right. You learn so much. So I, I love doing it. Love I that. actually used uh, Jeff uh, Cantor as my uh, coach. <laughs> uh, and it was interesting. He, he actually, I actually got my monologue, and Jeff Cantor was the, he played the gay dad on Stay at Home Dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, Jeff's a great guy. He's, he's a good actor. He's a good actor. He's a good actor. But, and I got my monologue that I use, I overuse, I guess, uh, the Alec Baldwin, uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Oh, that's uh, a great monologue. Yeah, and uh, he's the one that actually chose it for me. Yeah. So, uh, I guess I have to do a shout out to Jeff. Okay, <laughs> Jeff. But um, it, it is interesting. Uh, I think even Brandon, I think, is now teaching as well. You know, it's. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. He it, should be. He's yeah. he's good. You know. Yeah, he's good stand up. That's yeah, for sure. And he's, yeah. I think he's a great acting partner. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's not the character that he was playing in the. No, no <laughs> he's not. He's not. It's so funny to see him, uh, you know, outside of that because he's so good at playing like right. a jerk. He's good at playing a jerk. <laughs> so what's, you know, uh, okay. So you got the web series. Yes. Anything else on the horizon? Um. No, I'm just doing what every other actor is doing. I just audition right. and uh, and do things like that, um, and and try to. Uh, I I basically try to stay in touch with what's happening happening uh, technology wise because right. it's the business is changing so quickly That's and uh, we're seeing people develop their own work. I'm tr I'm learning how to develop things for myself as opposed to wait for somebody else to give give me an opportunity. Have you done features? Uh, yeah, I have. I did a movie, uh, Theo. Um, uh, I think that was about a year and a half ago. And uh, Don Johnson's daughter, Dakota Johnson, was in that movie. So that was cool oh. to work with her. Well, you know what? I can't believe it because... I'm sure I could... Now all of a sudden the questions are coming <laughs> into my mind. But the clock says it's, it's time, time to go. To go. <laughs> But it was really a pleasure having you on the show, and uh, well, it was a I was pleasure really, to be here. I was really excited that you were coming here. Hey, I, it, it was great. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay. That's a wrap. Good night, folks. Take care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.